So you're enjoying a sunny day in Stanford and your friend who works in a lab on the other side of the campus, she has been doing some IV measurements on uh, PN diodes uh, recently. And she has been observing that the current starts to you know, increase exponentially as she goes uh, beyond a certain uh, voltage uh, in the reverse bias regime. So she has been experiencing and uh, you know measuring this uh, reverse uh, breakdown. And you know she wants to understand a little more. So she comes over <clears throat> and she has learned that you know you have been taking over some uh, classes uh, in semiconductors and you have been you know you have you know a little thing or two about uh, pn junctions and she asks you know that i've been measuring this iv characteristics and i know you know i'm 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 causing a breakdown but what i want to understand is that is this breakdown being crossed by uh, avalanche process or is this breakdown being caused by a tunneling process so now you know you 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 know you scratch your head and you you know go back to your notes and you you actually remember that uh, we discussed that this uh, these uh, tunneling breakdown occurs when you have a highly doped uh, junction. So you know the first thing that comes up uh, in your mind is that you ask your friend that you know the first question you ask your friend is is your what are the concentration of your acceptors and donors in your PNN sites and are they high or you know is this a heavily doped uh, heavily doped uh, PN uh, junction? So she says you know Anish you know I agree that you know yeah this is this is probably a good thing to check. I didn't make these devices myself. These were, you know, grown by epitaxy or they were, these junctions were formed by an implantation. So let me go back and uh, check with the vendor whether they were heavily doped or what are the doping concentrations in my, in my PNN region. And she goes away and, you know, she, she's trying to figure this out. Then, you know, you, you actually go back to your lab and you're, you're trying to see how you can help her further. And you start thinking about the different mechanisms uh, of, you know, you start thinking about how these different uh, mechanisms operate. And uh, you try to draw the band diagram of this PN junction. So, you know, we remember, we have learned, uh, we have become quite uh, dexterous in drawing these uh, band diagrams. So you draw this uh, band diagram and you, you're thinking in your mind that, you know, how can you distinguish this uh, avalanche process uh, from uh, from this uh, tunneling process so i'm drawing this uh, band diagram over here and uh, i'll use one for tunneling and i'll use another for the avalanche uh, process so let me make a copy so let me make a copy of this uh, band diagram so i can you know i can separate out my thoughts uh, on the two topics so now when i'm thinking about avalanche process I'm, you know, I learned about how avalanche works. So avalanche process would essentially involve an electron which would gain enough energy in this field before scattering so that it can, you know, it can release or, you know, it can uh, uh, free an electron from the valence band and make it come to the conduction band. And in, in the process, generate a hole over here. And then these two electrons need to gain enough energy before they scatter. So in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of uh, scattering, they have to gain enough energy. So the delta E that they gain between two scattering events and the scattering distance between two scattering events, I can denote it uh, as a mean free path. So the energy gain before the scattering event or the energy gain in between the in this uh, uh, amount of distance traveled which is less than the mean free path should be high enough to cause uh, to generate this electron and hole pair. On the other hand, I'm, I'm not thinking about you know how does tunneling operate. So tunneling is essentially these electrons which are lying in the valence band they have to tunnel across this uh, tunnel across this uh, barrier and now they they essentially become free electrons in the conduction band and now now they contribute to this reverse uh, reverse bias leakage so if i think about tunneling i have to you know overcome this energy barrier which is represented by this shaded region so one way to do that is to cause increase my doping that's why I, the first question i asked my friend was you know what is the doping and if it's highly doped this uh, depletion where it decreases and this barrier for tunneling uh, reduces so that was you know i think yeah 
Yeah, I asked the right question. Now, what is the second good question to ask? So sometimes if you don't know the answer, uh, answer, you know, as, as it is, it's good to ask a good question. So at least that leads you to in the correct uh, direction. Semiconductor is one important variable is always temperature. So now I thinking about, now I start thinking about how would these avalanche and tunneling process would be affected by the temperature. So what would happen if I increase the temperature or if I decrease the temperature on this uh, breakdown voltage. So let's assume the case when my tunneling is, uh, my breakdown is being caused by this avalanche process. So if I increase the temperature, if I increase the temperature, what will happen is the scattering in my semiconductor will essentially increase. The scattering events increases by, you know, if you increase the temperature or my mean free path, that is the distance between two scattering events would decrease. So now I won't be, you know, gaining as much energy between two scattering events because essentially my scattering has become uh, very frequent or the distance I get my electron gets to travel before it scatters, it decreases. So the energy that I gain between two scattering events would essentially decrease. Or in other words, my avalanche process would become harder to do or my rate of my avalanche process would decrease. So my breakdown voltage, which is caused by this uh, avalanche process would essentially, would essentially increase with the temperature. So my, if my have an avalanche process, my V breakdown would essentially uh, increase if I increase my temperature. Now, on the other hand, let me think, you know, what will happen if I have, if I have uh, my breakdown being caused by, by the, by the tunneling process. So in this case, permitting uh, mechanism is this barrier for a tunneling. So what would happen to this barrier for tunneling if I increase my temperature? So in this case, if I increase my temperature, I, I already mentioned in the last video, so this barrier for tunneling, it depends upon two things. So it depends upon this distance and it depends upon the band gap. So it depends upon the distance and it depends upon the band gap. Now, what happens if I increase the temperature? So we know that if you increase the temperature, you reduce the band gap of your semiconductor material. So now if you increase your temperature, you are reducing this shaded uh, shaded region or you are reducing this barrier for tunneling because you're reducing your band gap. So now your probability of, uh, you know, of your tunneling process to happen or your tunneling current should increase. So if my, uh, if my, if I'm increasing the temperature over here, the breakdown voltage, which is, uh, which is essentially if it's limited by tunneling should decrease. So what should happen in your IV characteristics is that in your reverse bias, if you have this uh, IV characteristics and I'm only interested in this reverse bias breakdown and it was breaking down at say, uh, at this particular voltage at, uh, at uh, room temperature, if I increase my temperature to 100 K, now what should happen is it should start breaking down at, you know, lower temperature. So my breakdown at 100 C should be lower or, you know, my breakdown voltage should reduce if my breakdown voltage is being caused by this tunneling mechanism. So in that case, my breakdown voltage would essentially reduce with temperature. On the other hand, if I, the avalanche process, so now this avalanche process becomes much more difficult because if I increase the temperature, my, my scattering becomes more, uh, more prevalent. And I, in fact, I'm not able to generate that many electrons and holes pair as easily as uh, compared to room temperature. So if my mechanism is in fact limited by avalanche, then my breakdown voltage would increase if I increase, if I go from room temperature to, to 100, 100 degree centigrade, right? So, so then, you know, I call up my friend and I said, Hey, did you find out uh, about the doping? And she says, uh, yes, you know, she figured out that uh, the, doping to, the doping was in fact uh, heavily. So these junctions were heavily doped. So then you ask her a second question. Then you said, it, you know, is there a way that you can measure uh, these different IV characteristics at uh, different uh, temperature? And she said, yes, my advisor, you know, we just got a recent uh, grant last year. And the first thing we bought with that uh, grant money was a cryo station. So now 
you know i can uh, i can measure these uh, these uh, these iv characteristics at different temperatures and uh, so he said you know yes please do that and tell me how does we break down behaves as a function of temperature as you increase the temperature does it increase or decrease with temperature so now she goes back and does this experiment and she says that uh, the breakdown voltage is in fact uh, decreasing if i increase my temperature so you said aha you know the doping is higher and uh, the breakdown voltage is uh, is uh, decreasing with temperature so it looks like you know it's it's mostly a mechanism which is limited by your breakdown is being uh, limited uh, by uh, tunneling so now your friend is quite impressed with your knowledge about in the field of semiconductors and she you know she's willing to accept that this this breakdown is being caused by this uh, tunneling mechanism and now you you try you ask one final question you know just out of curiosity that what is the actual value of this uh, breakdown voltage you know what is the value of this breakdown voltage at uh, at room temperature and she said you know i have my data let me go back and look at it so she you know looks at her data and she said the breakdown is happening at uh, let's say 5.5 volt and then you know you 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 actually you're, you're trying to you are when you are trying to uh, google about this topic you found this uh, chart uh, on uh, wikipedia which says that you know it plots this uh, breakdown voltage and it says that uh, zener breakdown or this uh, tunneling related breakdown <clears throat> it occurs at a lower voltage so in general the zener breakdown it starts at a voltage where it's uh, between four times greater than four times the band gap and it's uh, less than six times the band gap on the other hand for avalanche breakdown to occur your voltage has to be high enough such that you know it has enough energy so that it can uh, excite uh, electron uh, from the valence band into the conduction band so in general the avalanche breakdown process it occurs at a voltage which is typically more than six times the band gap of your uh, material and you know she has been measuring these uh, diodes on on silicon and the silicon has a band gap of 1.12 at say let's say room temperature so six time of this is greater than six mm -hmm. so she is clearly measuring this uh, breakdown voltage which is less than six times the band gap of silicon which gives you know further seals the deal on the argument that you know most probably this breakdown is being caused by a tunneling mechanism and it's a zener uh, breakdown because for an avalanche breakdown you require much higher energy so you know you you let me scroll up so for this avalanche process you need energy which is you know at least much higher than the band gap or you know it's a higher multiple of the band gap because you need to excite a carrier which is uh, in the valence band across the band gap so that's why the the voltage at which uh, the avalanche breakdown occurs is typically higher than the voltage at which uh, zener breakdown occurs so this further you know now she is very impressed with your argument and you have uh, proven the fact that this uh, you have distinguished between your avalanche and zener breakdown process and you have proven that it's a zener breakdown.